Hi, everybody. How's it going? I trust most of us have seen the movie Weird Science, right? Yeah, great movie from the 80s. In that movie, two guys use a computer to create the perfect woman. I married my perfect woman 20 years ago. I did. That's not a lie. Um, and during those 20 years, she has been an oncology nurse at Central Maine Medical Center and throughout that time became a manager of the uh, oncology floor at Central Maine Medical Center. And on August 26th, 2014, it was her turn to be a patient on that floor. Uh, she got the news, we were at my house, um, our house. <laughs> She'd probably hit me. She heard me say that. Uh, she got the news, she was on uh, our front porch and came in. I knew what the call was, did not know the results. She came in and just melted in my arms and we cried, we cried for a long time. And that was the last time we would cry about her cancer together because she lives by a, a couple of mottos. Uh, she makes decisions very rapidly and she lives with no regrets. I'm hoping I'm not the first. Uh, but she, uh, she decided to face her cancer head on. That she decided that was gonna be the last day that we cried about her cancer. She wanted to face it head on and uh, just go through it, make her every decision she needed to make and we were gonna go through the process together. And one of the things, uh, I, I also work as a stand-up comic um, and she said, are you going to joke about, you're very auto autobiographical in your, in your comedy, you talk about your family, are you going to joke about my cancer? I said, I, I wasn't going to. Do you want me to? <laughs> she goes, I do. I really do, because if we can laugh at it, it takes the power away and I can get some of my life back. So we found some humor in it. It wasn't easy, but we did. Uh, she found out she had a, a small tumor in her right breast. Three options she found. Lumpectomy, where they go in, they take the tumor out. Mastectomy, they take the breast away. Or bilateral mastectomy, they take both breasts. She decided just like that. Both of them gone. I don't want to deal with this. I want to get rid of everything. She says, am I making the right decision here? I'm like, you goddamn right you are. Because what's happening here, you're telling your body, you tried to kill me. You're guilty by association. <laughs> Get the fuck out. You got to go. Right? I was behind her 100%. Get that done. So she opted for the reconstructive surgery. And so she had both breasts removed. And our first appointment at the plastic surgeon, we're going through the, the, uh, the reconstructive procedure and what's going to happen through that. And uh, so I'm helping her get undressed in the plastic surgeon's uh, examination room. And I'm helping her take her shirt off. And we have a long wait. And for the first time in two months, I got to touch my wife's breasts. And it was a little weird when the plastic surgeon came in. He said, Mark, could you put those away? Put them back in the drawer. We're not ready for them yet. Stop juggling. Let's just put them back, OK? I was not invited to any follow-up visits after that. But I learned a lot about cancer, learned a lot about breast cancer. One of the terms they have is nipple sparing, where they can remove your, if you're having reconstructive surgery, they can remove your nipples and save them for after your surgery and then reattach them. I didn't know about that. It's amazing. And she decided not to do that. She's like, no, the nipples, they have cells in them that were attached to my breast. I just want everything gone. I want everything gone. So now she doesn't have any nipples. And, and, and she, she was like, did I make that right decision? What, what can I do? Because I know I can get tattoos of nipples. I can get like a, a really decorative tattoo or something, or I can do nothing. I'm not sure. I haven't made up my mind yet what, what I'm going to do in this area. And I got to thinking. I was like, what about mine? Do you want my nipples? I'm not using them. <laughs> I don't even know why I have them. <laughs> Do you want mine? And she thought about it. She thought about it. And then she looked up at me and she goes, would you still lick them?
I was not prepared for that. <laughs> Nor did I think about it. And I decided against it. I don't want, I don't want to put these on my wife. My nipples are gross. <laughs> She's a beautiful woman. She deserves better. Uh, one of the things her, her, friends, her friends got a little annoyed with me because I wasn't into all of the pink ribbons and pink t-shirts and, and all of that. Uh, I, I didn't wear any pink. And they're like, Mark, why aren't you wearing pink? Don't you support your wife? I'm like, of course I support my wife. But I find other ways to do it. I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that where, where we're separating different kinds of cancers and commercializing them and prioritizing different kinds of cancers. You look at, in October anywhere, the, the whole country's pink, right? No other cancer you get that situation from. My buddy Neil has colon cancer. Nobody's wearing a brown ribbon for Neil. <laughs> I'm Mark, thank you.